Hey guys, you see here, welcome back to Unqualified Critics. So we've been covering, just like everybody else, the virtual pinball machines a lot. Everybody is hyped, well, everybody's probably an overstatement, but a lot of people are really hyped for this. Finally, virtual pinball will be available and it's not super expensive. You don't have to build it yourself. So this is gonna appeal to a lot of folks who have been building out arcades in our basements or wherever, our, our garages, whatever it might be. I know a lot of you guys have built out these arcades and pinball is a missing piece. And we know some new information on the arcade one up pinball. So there's gonna be more competition than ever this holiday for pinball sales. Uh, really the first competition because Toy Shock launched their cabinet last year, but they really left, ran unopposed. There was no other virtual pinball. Now all of a sudden we've got a ton of virtual pinballs and slowly but surely the differences among these machines have emerged. So the hardware that is shown in this video, this video was put out by Zen Studios. I'd encourage you to check out the original video. I'm gonna show some footage of it in the background. It's not final hardware. And if you look closely, it doesn't look super polished. There are a few things about the hardware that look off, most notably the front bezel piece on the top of the play field that's you know, right above the plunger. It's not completely flat. It looks kind of poorly hanging off the cabinet. It looks a little goofy, but I'm not too worried about it. This is just a pre-production cabinet. The artwork, of course, looks very nice. And I, I am happy to see there's like a plastic overlay around the flipper buttons to protect the artwork from your hand. So it's a nice touch. Also, this is the first close look I've seen at the plunger mechanism and it looks substantial. And apparently they've got some secret sauce, as they call it, with integrating that plunger into the uh, machine itself for its software. So I'll tell you right off the bat, the first thing I noticed, Zen Studios, or the gentleman from Zen that was on this video, he almost seemed to throw some shade at, at games. We know they, they threw down um, on at games telling them, hey, we're not gonna support cabinet mode for people that wanna stream our virtual tables to your hardware. Well, they're all in on Arcade 1UP. And whether you agree or disagree with that, you know, I'll kind of leave that for you guys to decide. That's not for me to tell you how to think on that one. That's that's up to you. Do you feel like that's an anti-consumer move or is it a reasonable thing that Zen Studios would do to protect, you know, sales of their product that they're doing with Arcade 1UP? I could see good arguments on either side of that, but as a consumer, obviously I prefer openness, but I, I don't have a real strong feeling about it. I'm not going to throw a lot of shade at Zen over that. You know, at the end of the day, this is their IP and, and you know, it's up to them to protect it. But again, they did throw some shade at At Games. He stressed repeatedly the need for really what sounded to me like hardware and software integration. Instead of just building a, a machine and throwing some games on it, they've done a lot of work to integrate and they're clearly proud of that work and, you know, good for them. This just comes down to two different choices. Do you want the closed polished, hopefully polished. I, I guess I shouldn't say it's polished. We won't know for sure till we see them in real life. But what seems to be a polished product, or do you want something that's open from At Games? And that, that might be a polished product too, by the way, but we know that it's going to perform differently based on, you know, are you streaming tables to the At Games? Are you playing the native tables? You get more options, but then therefore you might get a more varied experience versus with the At Games, you know what you're getting. So it's it's just a huge difference. And again, I don't know that there's a right or wrong on that. It's going to come down to your preferences as a buyer. You know, you're the one that makes that call. And I think they're all going to be hard to get this winter. I think these are going to be hard to find in stores. We saw GameStop put these up for pre-order and sell out very quickly. But anyway, to get back to this video that Zen Studios posted, this plunger, uh, he seemed to confirm that the plunger will have an analog control, meaning the, the stronger or softer you launch the plunger, that will play out in software and then the ball will be launched with a commensurate amount of pressure, which is really good news. Not that the ball launch is a big deal or if it is a big deal, I'm not advanced enough a pinball player to really know how to be strategic about the ball launch, but it is something you can do in a real table and you can do that here too. You can pull it out just a little and launch it gradually and that will carry through in the in the uh, on-screen animation of the virtual plunger. So that is great news. There's also a button right under the plunger that I believe is used for launching as well, which is nice because there are tables here, uh, at least the Attack from Mars table. When you're playing that, the real original hardware just included a button. So you get both, which is cool. Best of both worlds. We did get some different information from Zen on solenoids than Arcade 1UP has given us before. Arcade 1UP told us before we're going to get two solenoids left and right, 
uh, toward, I think, the front of the play field, so by where your flippers or where the bumpers will be, and then one in the middle. Well, we get a different story here from Zen. They say one solenoid per flipper and then two additional solenoids for the bumpers and then nothing in the middle of the play field. So we're getting four instead of three, which is nice, but then they're not as spread out on the play table as what Arcade One Up told us. And I can't tell you if this matters or not. If any of you guys have built your own machines, you know, let me know in the comments, do you feel solenoid placement is crucial or not? But it's interesting to me that Zen is telling us one thing and Arcade One Up has told us another. We may have to wait until this is released to know for sure. And speaking of solenoids, there was a photo released recently where the play field, the on screen where you play pinball, and actually you lift it up out of the machine. It almost looked like two little hydraulic levers where you can lift it up and it holds it open and you can get under it and replace these solenoids. And Arcade Went Up told us this will be end user accessible. So if those, if and when those solenoids burn out, you will be able to replace them, which is great news. Because the last thing we need to be doing is buying all this hardware and having stuff burn out in a year or two and then the things of paperweight. I'm always a fan as a consumer of products that we can maintenance ourselves and keep it going and really hopefully keep this product for a lot of years to come. All right, so next up, we know the languages this supports, English, French, Italian, German, Spanish. That may or may not correlate to where this will be sold, but that's simply the list of languages that will be in play that you'll be able to select when you're setting up the cabinet software. It will weigh 90 pounds, so it's different from what GameStop showed in their listing. It's quite a bit heavier. I think that's good news. That's one of the things I'm excited about with the At Games Legends Pinball is it will weigh 150 pounds shipped. That includes shipping weight. This is 90 pounds, and I assume that means 90 pounds for just the cabinet. So clearly lighter than the Legends Pinball, but that's to be expected. The Legends Pinball is quite a bit larger, and we know it has a glass overlay, whereas this has a plexiglass overlay. And I do expect people to sell glass overlays. Of course, you could go get your own cut. Every city is going to have a glass shop where you get custom glass cut. But I do expect vendors to sell us our own glass overlay if that's important to you. It's a little bit important to me. I think glass is just always going to be better than plexi, but we'll see. You know, By the same token, I've got a lot of their machines with plexi covers. I've got two cocktail cabinets. And I haven't scratched those, so it does seem to be a good quality plexi. But that's definitely going to be a point in favor of the Legends Pinball because it is glass. However, long story short, 90 pounds is what this will weigh. That is good news. We also know the dimensions, and we know the dimensions of the DMD, the secondary monitor on that back box, is 7.5 inches. They've gone back and forth and said 7 and 8. Apparently, the final panel is 7.5 inches. And the back box will light up. And I think we knew that from photos that we've seen before. But that is a nice touch. That is important, I think, that the back box light up, especially since the DMD is, is not that big. It's a traditional pinball layout. You've got a small secondary screen. It looks like it just displays a couple colors at a time. Now, look, I'm sure this is a normal LCD screen, and it could display you know any number of colors. But they're really treating this like a proper pinball DMD, which means it's a dot matrix type display. It's just got a few colors it's going to be able to run. And I personally am okay with that. This is going to look like a real pinball machine, which I think is cool. As for the dimensions, it will be 59.5 inch high, 36 long, 20 0.5 inches wide and the flipper buttons rest at 35 inches high so it looks a little goofy in the sense that the flipper buttons are up so high but yet it's so kind of short and narrow but i can see why they did that because 35 inches is how high a real pinball machine stands so it's looking a little bit like an atst from star wars or whatever the four-legged you know giant monsters are in uh, star wars i always forget atst versus atat but whatever the big one is this kind of looks like that. It's similar proportions. So the proportions aren't great, but I would rather have it built this way than built to stand completely proportional, you know, three, four scale, but it's shorter and we're all hunching over. So I think they made the right choice. I also really like how the box or the, the overall shape of the table is rectangular. It's like a rectangular cube. You've actually got a nice tall front panel here. It's got some faux, a faux coin door. It's got your controls for adding coins and volume and power. But that that is tall is nice. All the other machines we're getting from, I, I think the Toy Shock one is built like this too, but the well-played arcade, the At Games pinball, it's got a really narrow uh, front, if you guys know what I'm saying. So I, I like 
that we are getting that height here. It just makes it look a little more like a real pinball table, which is clearly what they're going for. A question that wasn't answered here that I would have liked to have seen. So the gentleman from Zen told us the software that he was showing on camera was final, even if the hardware is not. We still saw ball trails and we still saw pop-up score indicators on the play field. That's all well and good if you're playing on PC or Switch or console, whatever it is. But if we're playing on dedicated hardware, we ought to be able to turn those things off. Now, Arcade One Up has said previously you would be able to turn those things off, but there's been enough back and forth on this that I'm, I kind of want to see it for sure to know. And he didn't have it turned off in his video. So that would have been nice to know if we can turn that off. I know when I did my stream, there were a ton of questions about that. And for good reason, if you're playing original hardware, it needs to look like real hardware, not so much virtual and having those screen uh, scores pop up all over the screen like they do when you play on a PC, that kind of takes away from it a little bit. I gotta tell you, I am getting more excited the more is revealed about these pinball tables and we're gonna have to see what's up, but there's gonna be a big throwdown holiday 2020, a lot of virtual pinball options. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey, consider hitting that join button to support the channel and thanks so much for watching.